Hey folks, welcome, welcome. Hey, hope you had a good three-day weekend. I did. Got a lot of work done, watched some movies. Fantastic. Um, but time to get back uh, to, to work here. Um, we've only got a few folks with us, but I want to be totally respectful of your time and kind of jump right into things today. This is what we're going to do. We are going to go over the final strategic communications plan that you need to do for this course. Now, I know you still have the video to do. The video is due this week, um, but it's probably a really good time to start shifting. Remember, remember, the way this course was laid out is the first third or so, we kind of gathered the tools for communications in our toolbox, right? So we learned about purpose and objectives and audience and channels and all that good stuff. And then this middle, you know, the, the middle third, this video assignment that you folks have been working on, um, this has been practicing using these tools. And yeah, it's totally good that we've been practicing because some of us are still kind of struggling with the ideas of demographics and psychographics and how we, you know, use these things to better speak to our audience. That's totally normal. That's totally expected. That's totally by design. Because through this video assignment, you've been able to kind of play with the ideas. Hey, Heliana. Um, and we have Hiram with us. Fantastic. Well, that means, though, that we now get to take all these tools we've gathered and this kind of practice project, if you will, and we get to do the real thing. And in some cases, you may choose to do an actual real thing. We're going to explain that today. But it all comes down to the final communications project, um, which, as I said, technically does not start until next week. But you totally want to get ahead of this thing. The better you're, you're set for success early on, the easier it's going to be you know, down the road. So that's what we're going to do today. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pull up our presentation here. And, uh, oh, that's not working. Oh, well, well, I'll get it working later on. Um, and let's take a look at this. So what is a communications campaign? You know, the final six weeks of the semester is really built around creating a strategic communications campaign. Well, what is that? Well, a campaign uses media channels, right? Uh, messaging and organized communication events and activities uh, such as road shows, um, uh, open houses, seminars, webinars, things like that to educate, inform, and influence specific groups of people, remember a specific audience, during a specific period of time. Now, don't worry, we are going to go into mega detail on all this today, and I'm going to be providing it not only in this video that we're shooting right now, but I'm also going to be providing a ton of material, so you're going to be well set. So let's continue on. In Canvas, when you go on to start the third unit in Canvas, you're going to see kind of this um, introduction to the final assignment. Ways that you can approach your campaign. You can do it from a business research perspective, or you can do it from a service learning perspective, okay? Let's go over all of those in detail. And I should probably have found a better way to scroll through that, right? So when I mean a business research project, that's really just fancy speak for an internal communications campaign. So for example, you have been receiving tons of communications from Salt Lake Community College about how we're going to run uh, the fall semester because of COVID-19, right? Well, that's an internal communications campaign. 
you're internal because you're students with the community college. You are part of the audience, right? And so anytime administrators are speaking to students, think about it as, say, bosses or leadership speaking with employees and departments. That's internal communication. So you've received emails, there's stuff online, um, you've probably received some texts and so forth, right? Um, this is internal business. So there's a few ways that you could approach this. Um, you could, and I'm pointing at the wrong one, um, you could do this in support of your current employer right? So somebody on your team may work for a company that it's kind of like, oh, we have an internal communications need. Um, and we'll look at some examples so that you understand what I mean. Now, the really nice thing about, say, doing it with a current employer is that you have a ton of access to information you need. Um, and employers love to see you guys, employees, kind of go the extra mile and do work for the company at school. It really demonstrates engagement and commitment to the company. Um, and, and furthermore, it gives you more visibility in the company. I've seen this happen many times when a student shows interest in something with the company and has a team do something for the employer, it, the employers take notice and a career, if you're hoping to make a career where you work, can really go places. Um, and finally, it can strengthen your, your professional network. So let's look at some examples of what past student teams like you have done. Um, promote a uh, reward and recognition program at a local credit union. So this was teaching employees how to use a reward and recognition program. It already existed, but nobody was using it. So communications gets people to take action for a business specific result, remember? Um, develop a recruiting campaign for a local construction. So employee recruiting, that's communications. Um, a holiday party. Right, so maybe the company is going to do a party for, for Christmas or Thanksgiving or the holidays in general. Well, I don't know what that's gonna look like come COVID with this year because of COVID-19, but companies will likely want to do some sort of company recognition holiday event. Well, you can help promote that. You can help you know, promote it internally internal communication. Um, design material intended to help parents understand and obey the pool rules and policies during their kids' parties. This was a team, one of the uh, students worked for a community pool, right? And parents always brought their kids to, you know, have parties and so forth. Well, there were a lot of rules and policies around the use of the pool that this campaign promoted with the parents. Now, when you pull this document up later on, you're gonna see this link right here to the Smith, Smith's, yeah, the grocery store, Smith's Mentoring Toolkit. You'll see what a past um, student group did for their employer in terms of promoting a, a mentoring school uh, a toolkit. Okay. Now, another way you can do this is you can pretend that you are a consulting firm, okay? And what you are basically doing is putting together a vanilla off-the-shelf product that you could provide to a company. So let's say, for example, that the company needed um, um, instructional material on maintaining an economic workspace workspace that's what one company one group did uh, developed corporate training on how to survive black friday as an employee that's what another group did now the idea is you are a consulting firm you are putting together this material and it can be updated and customized 
for anybody who might use this material, okay? Um, also had another group that developed a short training program for new managers in the retail industry, okay? Now, when you pull up this document later on, you'll see this link right here. This shows you an entire campaign that a group did um, as manager, they did manager training. And the idea was this was generic vanilla off the shelf training that could then be customized for a potential client to use internally, okay? Now, another option you have um, is, uh, come back over here, Lon. Um, you can put together material for me um, or as, as Salt Lake Community College instructor, right? Um, this is, so you're, uh, you are writing material that an instructor such as myself would use and your audience would be Salt Lake Community College students in that class. So let's look at what some other teams have done. Um, some developed uh, instructional material to help students prepare for an interview. Others, how to shoot a video. Um, if you looked in the, um, in the video assignment that is due this, um, this week, um, down toward the bottom of the assignment, you saw this link to how to shoot a killer video. A student team put that together. Um, how to do well in an online class. I've had students put together a campaign that I could then use for online students, right? Um, to better excel and engage in an online environment. And once again, here are some examples. How to run a donation drive on campus, how to make a killer video, how to survive an online class. These are all examples of what past students have done. Okay, now these are all for business assign or business um, communication campaigns. However, you can also do a service learning project. Now, if you're not familiar with the service learning program at Salt Lake Community College, the idea is we want students to engage with the community more, to do volunteer work and to really help promote social causes in our community. Now, I'm gonna call out, this is kind of a weird time to be doing these because of the coronavirus. So these opportunities may not be as clear, but I still wanna make them available to you. Um, in the past, you know, it, we've, we've seen in the past, uh, students collect food for the Utah Food Bank or to encourage um, people to give blood for the Red Cross. Um, here's an example of something you might try. So if you're looking for a service learning example that is more broad, you could take a look at this. And then here are some resources that you can use for that particular option, okay? So that is, like I say, there we go. Um, that's available right here. However, I will be posting this document or a link to the document in the announcement when I post this video as well. So you have access to that material that I just shared in many places. Okay, so remember, as I said here, there's three parts to this final project for the semester, a plan, the deliverables, and a presentation. So let's look at all three parts one at a time. Let's first look at the plan. Now, a strategic communications plan, I wanna be clear, this is not an academic exercise. This is the strategic communications plan format that we use at Intel, eBay, PayPal, Adobe, you name it, okay? This did not come from a textbook, this came from my you know, 10, 20 years of experience in the uh, tech sector. So this is what would be in your plan at a glance. We're gonna go into detail, don't worry, but your plan is going to include a purpose objective statement that will include the who, what, when, where, how, why of the plan. 
your audience analysis, messaging goals, key messages, channels, and your media mix, as well as the tactical plan. So let's go through each one of these so that you understand what's going into your plan. Um, the purpose statement, it's really, how do you want to affect the attitudes, feelings, and behaviors of your audience? Are you trying to persuade or convince them to do something? Um, are you trying to inform, instruct, and educate? Or what is your call to action? What do you want them to actually do? So a good purpose objective statement includes these elements. And don't worry, I'm going to show you an example. Um, it should summarize who is your target audience? Who are you communicating with? What is the purpose of this communication? When are you going to communicate it? Where and how? In other words, what channels, what vehicles, what media will you use to communicate it? And why? Why is this important? Why does it matter? Okay. So let me show you an example and we'll break it down into the who, what, when, where, how, why. So here's from a student example. The purpose of this communications campaign is to teach Salt Lake Community College professors how to better teach students who are hard of hearing. This campaign will target professors before the semester begins during their required training period. This will be done through a variety of channels and media that effectively reach this target audience. It is the team's goal that in conducting this communications campaign, professors will be able to better, be, better understand the unique needs of their hard of hearing students and therefore make adjustments in their teaching methods. Methods, okay? So who are they communicating with? Salt Lake Community College professors. What are they communicating? How to teach students who are hard of hearing. Who, what, when, when are they communicating before the semester begins, during their required training period, who, what, when, where, and how? Well, through a variety of channels and media that effectively reach the target audience, the plan will go into detail. This is just the summary statement. And then who, what, when, where, how, why? Professors will be able to understand the unique needs of their hard of hearing students and therefore make adjustments in their teaching methods. That's what we want. We want them to make adjustments in their teaching methods to better reach this group, okay? So that's what your purpose slash objective statement will look like. You're then going to do an audience analysis. Now, you did this for um, this video that you just did, but what you did for the video was just a practice run. That was just you kind of experimenting and playing with the tools. For this audience analysis, you are going to go in depth into the demographics, psychographics, and context. Now, by the way, in the, you know, in these videos, you'll remember these videos that you watched toward the beginning of the semester. It can remind you what demographic psychographics and context are. But as a quick reminder, remember demographics are those things that are really easy to observe and measure. Age, gender, race, ethnicity, education, things like that. Um, Demographics, though, alone don't really tell us much. Yes, we can use them as a backdoor to kind of extrapolate certain psychographic, you know, details. And, you know, four times out of five will be close to right. But we don't want to just rely on demographics. We really want to get into the psychographics. What makes your audience tick? What's in their head? What are their behaviors and habits and opinions, tastes and attitudes, right? So you want to kind of figure out what is going on in your audience's head so that you can affect their attitudes and behavior. You're not going to be able to say you're 23 years old, therefore 
you know, join this club. It's going to be like, you really care about this and this, and you've had these experiences, and you believe passionately about these causes, therefore join this club, right? And then you're also going to look at context. Now, remember, there's a video here to talk about context, but context are things like, well, the time of day that they're receiving the communication or the place or the cultural context, the cultural um, you know, values that your audience possesses, uh, the people who are present, the social context, um, and you know what structures are in place. So, for example, right now, um, so right now, uh, let's let's take a look. Okay, I've got I've got eight people with me. I've got eight people. Well, what does that matter in terms of context? Well, why I I actually have a lot more than eight students. I have many more than eight students. So why are they not here? Well, contextually, let's face it. Early morning on a Monday, that's hard. That's hard. And furthermore, you know that I record this and post it. So why get up early morning on a Monday, right? Um, place. Listen, we know that online um, lectures may not be as effective as face-to-face in-person lectures. And so the place makes this a less effective channel than if we were in a room together. Culture. Well, now here's the thing. Most of you statistically are around 23, 24 years old, 22, somewhere in there. You're actually pretty cool with online. So that doesn't work against us. People present, though, think about this. Right now, you may very well be multitasking. This is not a call out. This is just the fact of the matter, meaning you're you're surfing YouTube. Maybe you're surfing Facebook and you don't do Facebook. I know what you mean. You're on the phone and doing other things. Well, that's because nobody else is around to kind of call you out if you're doing something else right now. And so because there are no people present, you are less engaged with the material. OK, that's a context thing. Structure. Well, I'm the professor, and so there's kind of this structure in place that says you should listen, right? But you know what? Our gener- my generation has a different attitude toward, toward authority and so forth than yours does. For those of you that are Gen Z and so forth, you see professors as just kind of guidance, help along the way, not authority right? So the point is, all of these things are contextual phenomena that affect our communication right here, right now at this moment. Well, now you're going to want to look at the context of your audience, okay? So you're going to do that. Um, And then you're going to look at messaging goals. Here's the idea. For anybody to do something, here's the do. Do, 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 do. What do you want them to do? Well, for somebody to do something, they need to feel like it's the right thing to do. Well, in order to feel like it's the right thing to to do, they need to understand. They need to think and know. They need to understand and have the information necessary to really process it, right? So, for example, um, you, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, we got eight people with us. You eight. Um, and don't worry, I'll talk about uh, to those who are watching this, uh, as a recording later on. What are you doing? You attended, you attended in the same way. Those folks who are watching this in recording, you're watching it in recording. I got news for you. There's a lot of folks who aren't watching this at all. And I'm going to get questions from them in three weeks saying what goes into a campaign. And I'm going to say, watch this. But you guys are either attending or you're watching it. Well, why? Well, because you feel like this is probably the best place to get the information you need. It's a big assignment. You want to do well in the class. Um, You know that 40% of the points, actually, that comes up here to think and know. 40% of your points, 40% of your grade hinges on these final assignments. 
And so you want to do well, you want to impress, you want to learn the skills, you want to apply them to, to the workplace. So that's an example of think, feel, do. So in your case, I'd say, all right, 40% of my final grade for think is on this final assignment. I want to do well on the final assignment, feel, and so it really makes sense that I attend or watch these videos so that when I do the assignment, I meet all the requirements and actually learn the stuff that I can then take to the workplace. That's an example of think, feel, do. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're gonna tell me in the plan, what are the key messages? Now, here's the thing. Nobody remembers everything. Nobody ever remembers everything, right? So you're gonna communicate all this kind of information, but your audience is gonna forget most of it. And so therefore, what are the three or four key messages that you want them to take away? If they take away nothing else, what do you want them to, to remember? So for example, if, if I were doing a communications campaign about um, returning to class in the fall semester with COVID um, going on, okay, I'm gonna communicate stuff about how to wear a mask properly and how to wash your hands for 20 minutes and use hand sanitizer, practice social distancing and, and you know, how to self-isolate if you're showing symptoms and what the symptoms are. All, you've, you've gotten all kinds of things, right? But what would a key message be? A key message would be, I as a professor very much care about your health and I am going to take all the steps necessary to ensure that, that you are both healthy and that these steps do not impede your ability to learn. They don't get in the way of learning, okay? And if I communicate that to you over and over and over, then the little things will kind of fall into place. Now, once again, when you see some student examples, and I'm gonna provide an example as well, you'll see what we mean by key messages in different contexts. Okay, then you're going to have your channels. What channels and media mix are you going to use? Remember, you don't just use one channel, right? So I'm providing this information here in this video. I'm re so that's live. I'm gonna record this video so I can then post it. Um, I am going to put this um, stuff out on, on um, Canvas announcements. I'm also going to send an email and the stuff is available in Canvas. And I'm gonna show you examples. Actually, I can take one of these away. So that's six channels I'm using to actually communicate this to you. Now, you're not gonna see all six. You don't care about all six. But if I can get you to see two or three of them, wonderful. So what channels are you going to use and why are they the right channels? All right, and then you're gonna have a tactical plan. Again, you will see an example of a tactical plan in the material that I provide. But a tactical plan is basically just a spreadsheet that says who your audience is, what message are you gonna communicate, and what channels are you gonna use, and what is the timing? When are you gonna communicate it? So for example, you know, a communications campaign takes place over time. Well, right now I am communicating the large overview of this, of this uh, final project, but I'm going to communicate about this final project many times over the next three or four weeks, different aspects of it. So my communications campaign to you to help you succeed in this project takes place over about three or four weeks. And over three or four weeks, I will deliver different kinds of information through different channels to help you in different ways. So that's how I would map it out in this tactical plan. Once again, you will see examples, so don't worry. Okay, so that's the plan. All right, that is the communications plan that you will be doing. Um, and you know what, my, I, I hid that away. 
Simran, oh, I see why it is working. Simran, thank you. Um, I, I don't have this high enough, or I have it too high, so I don't see a lot of the good mornings from Raina, Heliana, and, and Hiram, and so forth, so I'll need to fix that later on. Anyway, um, I'm trying some different things with the uh, um, comment section because I didn't like how dark this whole look was earlier, so I'm experimenting. I'm not totally happy with this, but I can make it work. Okay, let's talk about the deliverables. Well, the plan was big, right? That was a lot of information. You're kind of drinking from a fire hose. Um, the deliverables are much more straightforward. The deliverables are just what uh, the actual channels that you create for this campaign. Now, what I'm showing you here are channels that Salt Lake Community College has used in the past to, um, to encourage students to register for summer classes. Now, it worked for you guys because lo and behold, you're in this summer class, right? Well, how did Salt Lake Community College try to you know, encourage students to register for summer classes. Well, they had this Canvas, you know, banner here. So when you opened Canvas, you saw this there. If you opted into text, which most students don't, um, they you got this text here. It was also in their website. It was on Twitter. Yeah, you're like, what? People still do Twitter. Um, faculty. Me, I received an email from Slick asking me to tell you, hey, sign up for summer classes. You also got an email. There was a banner on the on the enrollment site, and it was in Facebook, like you follow Facebook. Here's the point. Salt Lake Community College in this campaign used a variety of channels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight channels to encourage you to sign up for summer classes. You didn't see all eight of these channels. Nobody sees all eight of these channels. I had to search for most of them, right? All you need to do is see two or three of them, right? Remember, reach, frequency, things like that, the things we talked about in channels. You'll also notice all these channels have a common look and feel. A girl in a hat laying on the grass, Girl with a hat next to her laying on the grass. Girl taking a walk with grass in the background. Same picture, you know, except for a couple, but even those that are different um, have the same sort of look and feel. Girl, grass, hat. Girl, grass, hat. Now, notice what else they did. They made sure that they included diversity, okay? We have here a you know, white gal, we have here a gal of color, meaning we recognize that Salt Lake Community College is an awesome, diverse campus, and we want to make sure that we're speaking to everyone. Now, if I were grading this, I would say I'd probably like to see this picture more. We really relied heavily on this one. This one kind of stands out a little bit, but it's still within keeping. Then what about the channels? Were they all effective? Hell no, right? This is far and away the most effective channel by far, right? A Canvas banner, because remember, the target audience is current Salt Lake Community College students. Um, oh, okay, all right, gotcha. Uh, 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 that's just fine, Raina, no problem at all. Um, the, 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 the audience was Salt Lake Community College students, which means you always go into Canvas. You always go into Canvas. So you have pretty much a guarantee of 100% reach um, with, with this one. Furthermore, um, the faculty one, having faculty encourage students to take classes is actually a really effective channel. Which ones here are almost useless? Twitter, that's useless. Facebook. You don't follow Slick on Facebook. A text, you have to opt into the text. Not many students opt into the text. Not all your channels are going to be stellar, amazing, fantastic channels, but you want to have a good, broad marketing mix. And that's all the deliverables are. You're just going to send me 
these deliverables, whichever channels you choose to do. Okay, so then you're going to present your campaign, which means you're going to shoot a video where you kind of talk through your campaign. Don't stress about this one. This one's the party. This one's just having fun. This one is just saying what you learned, what you thought went well, what you think you could have done differently, all that sort of stuff. So, for example, I am about to now, in this portion of this lecture, I'm going to present a campaign to you. I'm going to show you what I expect. So, hi, my name is Lon Schiff Bauer, and I'm part of Team Nutshell Brainery. You know, that sort of thing. This is what we're looking for. I'm going to show you the campaign that I put together for the Jumpstart Your Semester um, extra credit opportunity that we gave at the beginning of the semester. Remember the beginning of the semester where I said, hey, there's this extra credit opportunity. You know, you can learn, earn a lot of points. Tell your friends and family about Nutshell Brainery. Come in, comment, subscribe, things like that. That was part of a full-on campaign. Here's a copy of my strategic communications campaign. Folks, I will give you this, this campaign. I'm going to provide this campaign to you so you can see a full-on real-world operating example. Now, when I were, am doing this presentation, I would tell you about my purpose. My purpose was to get students engaged in the material early on, to give them an incentive to jump right into the content and to explore new things. Um, my audience was Salt Lake Community College students in my class. And I actually have in here, and you would include in your presentation, all the demographics and psychographics and the context that I took into account when putting together this campaign. So you will explore that in your video presentation to me, your purpose and your demographics and psychographics and context about your audience, and then the channels that you used and why they you felt they were the right channels. So these are the channels I used. I had this banner. I had this uh, Canvas announcement. I have the actual assignment that's in there. And notice they all have a common look and feel. Everything about my whole campaign is branded consistently. Remember, we talked about design much earlier in the semester, right? Remember, tools in your toolkit. You want a common look and feel. You want people to be able to just glance at a communication and go, I know what campaign that's part of, right? These were some channels I used. I then had a boilerplate invitation. I had the submission tally sheet. Again, common look and feel. And then I had, and I'm gonna to try to make sure this doesn't start up. I had a video that I put out there. Um, I used, um, uh, who's the movie? What's it? Remind.com and a few little uh, announcements and so forth, uh, an email. So in all, I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight channels to communicate this information. Now, I want you to notice something. You might be like, oh my gosh, eight channels, you know. No, it's all the same message. It's all the same look and feel. Think about it, folks. I only had to design the messaging and the look and feel once, and this just apply it across all the channels. That's why your, your campaign plan your communications campaign plan is so valuable because you're going to come up with all your key messages. You're going to come up with your, you know, think, feel, do, and then you're going to come up with your look and feel. And then you're just going to apply it consistently across all your channels. So doing eight channels is almost as easy as doing two or three, right? So that's what a presentation would look like 
and I tried to do the, the video. Um, that is what the presentation would look like to me at the end of the semester. You talking through your campaign plan and then showing off your channels and talking a little bit about what you learned. Okay, so folks, that is what you're going to be looking at for the last six weeks or so of this semester. So what I want to do now is um, open it up to you guys. Yeah, I totally need to change that chat. That looks no good. Um, open it up to you folks to see if you have any questions at all about any of this. As you formulate your questions and write them in the comments there, I'm going to reiterate. I have, of course, recorded this. I will post it to Canvas. I will provide um, my campaign plan. I will provide a lot of examples, uh, the examples that I showed you earlier, and you will have just about everything that you need to get that big picture view. Of course, I will be continuing to talk about this for the next few weeks, but this is your great big overview. So, question. Qui a de question? Who has any questions? And if you don't have any questions, just say, hey, dude, no questions. Thanks. And we'll leave it at that. We still have seven folks with us. Of course, multitasking. I get it. I totally get it. I would be too. Actually, it happens a ton in the corporate world. No questions, Heliana. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, in the corporate world, we know darn well when we hold these virtual meetings and so forth, the folks are not fully there and engaged. It's just the natural fact of things. Um, okay, so Hiram looks like you're set. Um, Evelina, uh, don't have any questions at the moment. Okay, fantastic. Then what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to wrap this up. Thank you very much for joining me today. And thank you very much for watching this after the fact. And get with your teams. Start kicking butt. Um, Stephen does ask, so internal business communication or service, but no marketing client acquisition. No, that's external marketing. Remember, there's a difference between external marketing and internal marketing. External marketing is about getting customers. Internal marketing is about getting the work done for the customers. Now, that said, what you could do, Stephen, is you could have a campaign that teaches your salespeople how to talk with new clients, how to practice good acquisitions, where to go for, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, but no, that's the difference between internal and external. Good question. That comes up a lot. I understand it's a, it's a nuance, but it's an important nuance. Okay. All right, folks. Well, until I talk to you next time, have a fantastic day. You know where I am. If you want to connect up, let me know and I can answer any questions you might have. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.